Lust is definitely a dubious human quality. Or emotion, lust need not be interpreted in the context of sex alone. It can be for power, material objects, alcohol, or even for knowledge. Let's take the usual context that is sex. According to the Oxford Dictionary, lust is a strong sexual desire. However, can one really define strong? It is subjective. So basically lust is a sexual desire, which can be strong in some. Weaker in others a matter of relativity. An excess of anything is bad, be it greed, faith, honesty. Being a workaholic is also not good because you tend to ignore your own health and family. Similarly, lust in excess or uncontrolled is bad and can be damaging to yourself and others. But it cannot be inherently considered bad as it is natural. Anything natural cannot be bad. However, if everyone is allowed to act on their lust, it would lead to social anarchy. Hence the institution of marriage or monogamous relationship is necessary to regulate lust. Society has therefore evolved thus. Lust does not automatically mean a sexual desire for any or multiple women. Lust can be experienced within the boundaries of monogamy. Someone can feel lust only for one's own partner or spouse. If a man lusts for his wife of 10 years, is that bad? In fact, there can be nothing better if that is even possible. People would queue up to find that couple's secret. Lust is quite common among men and directed towards any or multiple women. Luscious. Attractive, or even otherwise. After all, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. But it is important to control such kind of lust, especially in a monogamous relationship. If lust is consensual between a man and woman, it cannot be bad. But if either of them is married to someone else, then it amounts to cheating. If lust is uncontrolled, the person can become a maniac. Acting upon lust towards a woman without her reciprocation leads to molestation. Prostitution is an industry exploiting unsatisfied lust. So it is a consensual expression. One party gains livelihood, money while the other gains satisfaction or not. But it is usually considered immoral. Also, a lot of women are forced or coerced into prostitution. There is also the concept of sugar daddy where a woman willingly satisfies a man's desire in exchange for material comforts and luxury. For a society and an individual to function optimally, it is important to regulate lust. Therefore, it has been channelized into a monogamous relationship or marriage. A man can manifest his lust in a healthy way in a monogamous relationship as long as his spouse is not objectified in her biology and emotions are respected. If he lusts for other women, that lust should be and can be controlled. In ancient scriptures, it is said that when desire is obstructed, it creates anger or the desire becomes stronger and it wants to fulfill itself by any means, right or wrong, and it is called lust. Sexual desire, when it is obstructed, gets converted into lust if it gets no outlet. This is because, unlike animals, human society imposes restrictions on sexual relationships. We can indulge in sex only by the consent of two adult persons. During sex, we cannot do violence to another person. Sex is regulated mostly by marriage, which is a legal contract. Sexual violence or non-consensual sex is punishable by law. Sex can also result in unwanted pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases. So, whereas sex is the most pleasurable experience, it has a lot of restrictions that we must observe. So, what to do to prevent sexual desire from getting converted into lust? We must learn self-control. At the same time, sexual desire cannot be suppressed. Any desire, when suppressed, gets more strong and can become uncontrollable. I will narrate some methods of controlling sexual desire so that it does not get converted into lust. 1. Sexual education of both boys and girls. In the absence of sexual education and secrecy associated with it, boys and girls learn it from uninformed friends and porn sites which creates unrealistic imaginations of sex. Some films also glamorize sex to make it the ultimate goal of life. Some youngsters fall prey to such sources and develop lust. The solution is scientific sex education. 2. Nature also wants us to procreate. This procreation takes place through sex. Nature preserves a species through procreation. To make it sacred, human beings have created the institution of marriage, unlike animals because of unique human needs. If we look at sex and understand its true significance, there will be no lust but only healthy and wholesome sex. When we look at our parents, doesn't their relationship appear sacred to all children? Surely yes. That's why marriage is the grandest celebration in every culture. 3. Yoga and spiritual practices for controlling or sublimating sex which is called brahmacharya till one is married. Discipline is necessary even in married life in the Indian tradition of spirituality. 4. 
lust or uncontrolled sexual desire may be related to medical and psychological problems. If so, medical advice has to be sought. 5. If we look at the human population, about 50% are male and about 50% are female. That means God or nature has created approximately one man for one woman to enter into marriage and satisfy sex legally and wholesomely. Except very few who prefer celibacy. Marriage is a method of controlling sexual desire from getting converted into lust. So all of us should be able to fulfill our normal sexual desire in the right way. Let us try to understand what this lust really means in a broader sense of the term. Lust means sexual craving as it is usually understood to mean. However, lust can also mean lust for name, lust for fame, lust for power, lust for the position, etc. In short, lust means the desire to achieve. Now, why do I desire to achieve? Because I feel in me a sense of incompleteness, a sense of not being fulfilled. I am now incomplete. I am now unfulfilled. I want to become complete. I want to become fulfilled. This is what drives every one of us into action. All these problems are bound to come if we limit our existence, only to the waking state. Let's consider what happens when we are in deep sleep. We are not aware of the world around us. We are not aware of all those people whom we stay with. And moreover, we are not even aware of our own bodies, which are so dear to us and what not we do pamper it during our waking hours. After getting up from deep sleep what is our experience? Do we not say, I was very happy? I did not know anything. There was no incompleteness. There was no unfulfillment when we were in deep sleep. But in the morning when we wake up, we are back to square one. The same old story continues. In deep sleep, we are truly merged into the source of our very being, the pure, homogeneous, and undivided consciousness which is essentially our own nature. But we did not know ourselves fully. Otherwise, after getting up from sleep, we wouldn't have said, I did not know anything. In short, not knowing ourselves is the root cause of lust. Had we known that we are pure by nature, ever complete and ever fulfilled, where can there be any room for lust and all the subsequent actions that follow in its course? The very purpose of meditation, yoga, etc. is just to know this very thing that we are ever free, ever pure, ever happy, ever blissful, ever intelligent. Most problems with lust are that it is caused by neurosis. A neurosis is a thought we try to force out of our minds, which then becomes ten times more volatile in the subconscious. If people were to be taught how to deal with their thoughts of copulation with others, in a way that was not forcing false guilt they would be able to deal with those thoughts. A lot easier. Thinking thoughts about love, friendship, etc. are simply nice thoughts, which makes them easy to turn off. It is usually only when a person is forced to feel shame and guilt that they have no way of finding an escape from what then becomes a problem with the volatility of their thoughts in the subconscious. There are other reasons that people have their lives distracted by lust. But for the most part, lust does have a chance to destroy people's lives. It is a huge distraction. People need to spend their time on things that are important and not having the time. Because of seeking others' company for sexual pleasure is very time-consuming and in many cases, there are a lot of things that can be perused that have a more beneficial result. For example, wisdom and knowledge and understanding what actually is worthy of our effort and time.